Hi there, this is Groovy and G and these are my ultimate tips for workflow on a Mac. Okay, so we're going to start fairly simple and then ramp up to some more advanced stuff as we go. And the first thing I really want to talk about is the path bar. Now you can see I've got this enabled on my computer here and it's very easy. All you've got to do is go to view and then you go show path bar. So you can show the path bar and that is going to give us this information down here. And if I go into folders, you can see it's going to update as we go. And this is really handy because you can right click and open any of these into a new tab and go to a new destination or you can just click back on from where you are and you can always see the file path of where you're working on your Mac. The next tip I have is about saving your files. Now, this is just an audio editor called Twisted Wave and if I want to save this little bit of audio, probably most of you will know this, but you can click file names in here and then it will automatically put that as your file name of your new file. But what you can also do is drag folders in and if you have a particular location you want to put this new bit of audio in, I can go to this folder and I can actually drag from that finder window into this save window and it's going to automatically jump to where I want to be. Another really handy tip is to use this favourites folder area in Finder for your most recent projects. I've just created some little separator folders here and this is literally I've just created a folder with dashes and dragged that in. What I like to do is put my current project in between these two icons and usually I have four or five of my main folders associated with that project all there so I can just access them all with one click. Another really handy place to store your folders or favourite file locations is this toolbar at the top of Finder and if you right click here you can choose between icon and text or just having the icons or just having the text. But I also have a couple of my favourites up here and to drag a folder in here all you do is you hold command and then you can just drag and drop anywhere on this window and then if you hold command again you can just get rid of that folder if you want to get rid of it. Another great organisational tool is tags and I'm sure a lot of you will use tags in a number of ways. In preferences of Finder, you can come in here and if you go to tags, you can set up uh, here, you can create new tags and you can color it in here if I choose the color. And then you have this little bar at the bottom, which if you want to put your favorite tags into, and these are the ones that are going to show up when you go to a folder and you right click it. Here now I've got this tutorial tag right at the front and that's because I've dragged it to the front of my tags in, in this preferences window. Another great thing about tags is you can actually drag them to this dock area at the bottom. And to do this is really simple. You just click and drag your tags to the right hand side of this divider. And then you can also choose how you want to display whatever is in the tag. And I really love using this list view because you just get a nice long list of everything that's in that folder or in that tag. OK, so let's have a quick little look at the dock then. Now a lot of you will use hiding mode and I like to have my dock all the time on but you can actually right click and turn this hiding mode on. But you'll notice that my hiding mode is a bit snappier than yours might be in its animation and this is something that really annoyed me about this dock hiding mode in the past. So to make this animation go quicker you've got to do a little bit of coding but it's really simple and I'll put this in the comments of this video. So all you've got to do is go to terminal and here we are in terminal and all you've got to do is copy this bit of code in that I've created and this is the bit of code here and then that's literally it and then press enter and that will do it. So it's really is that simple it's just copy and pasting something into the terminal and now when you turn this hiding mode back on you'll have the nice snappy dock. Now if you don't like that you can always go back to the default behavior and you can type in this other bit of code press enter and then you can see if I turn this hiding back on. Oh, it's so annoying. It's, you put your mouse down there and you can never quite access it. It's so slow, the animation. It's the most infuriating thing. So this code actually just makes all the difference in the world. And if I put this back in, press enter again, and then we've got this back. And look, if I turn the hiding off, turn the hiding on again, 
you can see it's come back to being nice and snappy. And I just think it responds better this way. You're never hanging your mouse at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so the next tip is probably the most used thing I do on the Mac and it's such a lifesaver. And if you haven't do this, this is the one point of this tutorial I really think you should listen into because it's such a killer workflow tip. What it essentially is, is using smart folders on a Mac. And if you don't know about these, these, these are folders that will auto populate. And I have one here that is called Music Recents. And if I go into show search criteria, what I'm essentially doing is just any musical file. So any file with like a .wav or a .mp3 that I've created in the last week will show up in this music recents smart folder. And just the same as with tags, you can drag this to this area down here and you can see I've already got one in there. And I have this list on, uh, it's on stack and list view and then I've got it ordered by date created. And whenever I save a file, like if I go back to Twisted Wave and I just record a little bit of audio and let's just export this to the desktop, it will update in this list. And so I can click this list and then I click home and then I can click command and enter and that will open me to the exact destination of where that folder is. And it's so quick for say, when you, as soon as you save a file, you can just go into this music recents home command enter and just take you to that destination so let's actually go through setting one one of these up from scratch so what we're going to do is we're going to go file new smart folder and for this thing we're just going to do this mac and we're going to hit this plus icon and the first thing we're going to do is go created date and for my one you can see i've done created within one week so i quite like that that amount but you can specify that to whatever you want and you can see this is going to show me everything that's been created on my mac within a week so the next thing we can do is go and specify what we actually want to include the file type we want to include and here this mac i've already made this quite simple and you can just go to kind and then go to music once you've done all that, you can just hit save and you can save that and it, it appears in library save searches and then you can get that folder and drag it to your dock and off you go. So whilst it's very useful to have one of these set up for all your music files, it's also very useful to have it set up for all your design work and you can have this done for Photoshop files and images and movies and all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you very quickly how we can do that as well. So we go file new smart folder and let's go in here and for this I actually like to use content modified rather than using date created I think it's a bit more practical and then we're also going to do within the last week and so now just before you hit this plus arrow you actually have to hold alt and then you get this new window pops up where you can specify any of the following are true and then you can choose a whole bunch of things so if I choose say kind and then I could choose image and then I could add another one and I could choose kind and go movie. And then what you can also do is add a file extension. Now, if you can't see file extension, you can click other and then type in file extension and then you can tick it in this little window. And then I can come here and go file extension and say I want to add .psd to this list and show up any PSDs which has been created recently. So here you can see now .psds are showing up in this list as well. And you can keep going and adding file extensions to this list. Okay, so in this example, we're just searching the Mac here as our destination. But what happens if we didn't want to search the Mac and we wanted to search specific subfolders or specific drives? So the way to do this is actually just to save your selection here. So we want all of the stuff we set up to still be retained and then we have to go to that location. So it was in library, wasn't it? So if we go, go library, and then it was in saved, I think saved searches is what we're looking for. And what we've got to do now is open up text edit. Okay, and then drag that actual folder onto this text edit icon, and it's gonna open this window. And don't be alarmed by all this code, because we're just gonna do another very simple copy and paste thing in here. But what you've got to do is you go and find. So Command F to find and then copy this from my comments, but uh, FX scope array of paths and find this location 
in all of this text. And what you're looking at is in between these two arrays, this little area here. And this is what's telling the smart folder where to search on your computer. And so you can add new file destinations in here. Okay, so the way to do this is actually just to copy this line here and just paste it down a level. And then I'm actually gonna go and tab that across. And I'm going to just go to, say I wanna add this SSD. What you can do is use the hotkey, Alt, Command and C to copy the file path. And if I just go and paste that file path, it's gonna give me this. And so I, then I can just replace in here this file path to now be searching the rocket. And if I get rid of all of this information, now this, and I save this and I quit this, maybe I need to quit finder. So finder kill all or something. Maybe if I quit the finder in here, relaunch like that. Okay, now we can see in this uh, design, it's only showing me one file because I actually in that rocket, I only have one file there, which is a movie file. But I'm just proving that this, this trick works. So if we go back to where this thing's located, I can drag this back into text edit. And if I go back, command F again, find that same thing again, and let's go and copy that paste in again, tab that cross, and now let's go and add, say, let's go and add, this is this has got all my design work in, so I'm gonna copy that file path again, and come in here and paste it in. So I've, I'm now searching both my SSDs with this workflow, and then I'm saving the text edit, and I can quit that, so we can see now this list has been populated with both the single file that was on the rocket uh, and you can see the SSD rocket there. And then also you can see that it's got the files from the T5. So another thing I'm absolutely obsessed with is Apple Notes and they're just incredible and I really need to make a full tutorial on just Apple Notes in itself. But I'll show you a few of my favorite tips. So the first thing is if you're browsing a web page and you want to save this link for later, you can just open a new note and then paste that in. And if you hit spacebar, it's going to turn that into a hyperlink. And then you can just click that to open it. But you can also, if you just command A and select this hyperlink, uh, the, the actual web page link, you can drag that in and then you can right click and view it as a small image. And this will give you another quite nice link with the icon. You can also drag images into notes and the great thing about these images is they actually show up and you can use them to identify different notes. So I've got one here which I use as important things to remember. The point here is you can just take, I just take these little icons off Google Chrome and I just paste them into these windows. So like important icon and you can literally just copy that image and paste it in here and the top image will actually be the one that shows up in this little window. Another amazing thing you can do with Apple Notes is actually link to files and folders on your computer. Now, the native way to do this is very simple. All you gotta do is find the folder that you like and that you want to save the link for and use that same hotkey before, which is Alt, Command, and C. And that's gonna copy the file path. And then if we paste that, this is the file path. And all you've got to do is add this little bit of code, which is file and then a semicolon in front of the file path. And then we can copy that. And say I want to make this link music business. I can then select this, this type and you can do this for any words you want. And I press command K and then I can paste in that file link that we just created. And now I've created this link. And if I quit this folder, when I click this link, it's gonna open this folder back up. And so you can see how amazing this is as a tool, especially when you're working on projects where there's lots of folders everywhere and you want them all stored in one place. It's just amazingly handy. Maybe a slightly easier solution or certainly a quicker solution to this is actually to use this app, which is called Hook Productivity. And with this app, you can do a very similar thing just with a hotkey. And for me, it's shift, command, and spacebar. And then I can use this app and I can hit command C and that's gonna copy that same 
thing that we did before and you see it just packages it exactly the same as what as what we had done before manually but actually it's using this hook file link to link to the folder destination rather than the, the apple link that we created earlier so if you want a tool that's going to do this all for you then hook productivity is really useful now another crazy thing you can do with apple notes is actually link notes to other notes and this is where you can get really complicated and sophisticated workflows going where it, i have these note files where if i go to recent notes i have a whole list of all the recent notes i've created and I can click on them and it's gonna tunnel all the way through all my notes to this specific location to where I've got this note set up. So the way to do this, and it's a little bit different on different versions of Mac, but for, for me on Monterey, what you gotta do is you click uh, share this note and you go to this copy link and then I actually use one of my dummy uh, email addresses and I click share going to assign this person to share it with and then I've actually got this link here to this note and if I put this note anywhere in my folder so if I just drag this and put this note all the way down in Pro Techniques it's this link will always retain the location of where that note goes wherever you move it so if I click this link it's going to tunnel all the way through and find that note again but if I drag this somewhere else say into music hardware and I go back to this location again and I go back to this link, it's still going to remember where that note's gone. And that for me is crazy because you can always reorganize your notes as much as you want and still retain all these links. And that's super valuable and really helpful. One final thing to bring that idea full circle is that you can actually use stickies to link to notes. And here I've got a little sticky and I've done this um, using that iCloud linking technique, which you use to link notes to other notes, but you can link stickies to notes as well. And this means if I want to go to this area where this helps me finish tracks when I'm having problems getting through songs, I have this little help guide um, I've set up. And so I will jump to those things when, when and if I need them. But you can also link stickies back to Apple Notes. And that is another really handy little tip. Anyway, so that's really it for me today. I hope this has been useful for some of you and you can implement some of these tips into your own workflows. And uh, yeah, catch me soon on my channel. Peace.